Hi there, today we're unboxing quite a different product from the usual. It's actually an LCD monitor. It's by a company called GeekPi and it's actually a five inch monitor for a Raspberry Pi. So let's have a quick look around the packaging. And as you can see, nothing on there, just a plain box, just a label on there, that's that. Let's have a look what's in the actual package itself. Bit of foam, bubble wrap, looks like the actual screen itself, and a bit more foam, nothing else. Let's have a look inside here. First of all, got a nice little pen device, just a bit of plastic. It's okay, yeah, nothing too special about that, just a standard sort of thing. And then the screen itself, let's have a quick look at that. So I'll go in close. So it's got four holes either end. It's got a mini USB connector and a HDMI connector. The actual board itself. So there you go, the actual resolution it supports. So it's a five inch screen supports 800 by 480 plug and play and it's touch screen it's a very interesting product thought we'd give it a go so you could actually build a little box to go around it so there you go that's the display itself so what we'll do next I'll have a quick look around the net and see if I can find details how to set this up it does say it's plug and play but let's just verify that Quickly scan around. Okay, so it looks like for the touch and power, you probably plug that into your Raspberry Pi. Okay, let me have a look, a look around and then I'll get back with what you're supposed to do to set this up. Okay, so once out of the box, the actual display card, which is here, if you plug it straight in, it doesn't work. You've got to do some configuration settings on the actual device itself. Uh, so your actual Raspberry Pi. So I've got the Raspberry Pi booting up here at the moment. There you go, it's nearly there. Okay, so let me get to the website that's going to give you the details so i'll have it in the description so have a look there to see how to do it and i'll just bring it up here so all the details are in here quite simple to follow so i'll quickly skip through it and the bit we want to get to is just here so um, how to set the resolution on the Raspberry Pi so it's saying obviously ras uh, Raspberry uh, image burn it uh, to a your mini SD card using this disk imager tool and then log into your Raspberry Pi ours is already logged in and then edit this file and make sure these these parameters are in there now as part of these parameters um, you've got something called device tree. Now, that value there is actually dependent on the version of um, the model, sorry, the product model of your Raspberry Pi. So, the one we've got is the Pi 3 mode B. So, for our one, we, we need to put that one in. So, I've already done this, but we'll just demonstrate how it's done, just to show how to edit the file. So, need to go to the terminal window first and then edit the file. So, this is what you do first. So, so what you want to do, you want to get into a super user. So, sudo su. Yep, and then we need to go to a certain directory, which is that. 
So if I copy that, I can just go back here and just type in CD that. Okay, and then we need to edit the config.txt. So how do you do that? So you could type in sudo nano and then paste the name. So you can just do config.txt and that's the file, that's how you edit it. So press enter. Yeah. And then you'll come up with all this. So if I compare this, so this is a text editor. Obviously you've got to be careful when you're navigating around there. I'll just make the window slightly, it's just slightly smaller. And then let's have a quick flick through there. So frame buffer, there you go, 800 uh, width, uh, frame buffer height, 480, you can see there. Uh, if you scroll down slightly, you've got that. There you go, HDMI force hot plug. Uh, I had to amend some of these values. Um, and let me see what else. And there's the HDMI CVT with these values after it, just a space after each one. I wasn't too sure with this big gap here. Uh, device tree, obviously what we spoke about a moment ago, that's the value in there because it's a Raspberry Pi 3. And going back, uh, DT parameter. Oh, no, no, there it is, sorry. There you go. Okay, with all those values in, uh, we'll just quickly go to the article again. All you do, you save it. You want to show how to save it then, after you've done your edit? So press Control X, and, ish, and then to save it, it'll, say, it'll ask you some stuff, press Y and then enter, and then it should save. Okay. That's good, so it's straightforward. So after that, it says reboot the Pi. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna actually shut it down and then plug in uh, the HDMI. So, and then power it back up again. So let me sh shut it down cleanly. We don't want any corruptions happening on the actual SD card. So let me do that first. Okay, so we've got the Raspberry Pi here. HDMI is just there, Ethernet's connected there, keyboard and mouse is here, and we've got a mini USB connector here. So, let's connect this up. So the other end of the HDMI is just over here, and I'll plug that in. The mini USB connector can go just in there. And then we'll just plug the power into the Raspberry Pi. And that's the first thing you see with it booting up. Okay, just be a moment hopefully. There you go, you can see the mouse moving now. And there you go, it started up. Picture quality, if I can show you, it's pretty cool, to be honest, it is good. Very controllable and usable. So what we're thinking, we could use this for, for small projects, you know, with a little mini screen, so that'd be quite nice. Maybe even build a box around it, so it's quite nice with the little holes there. Attach it onto the box, have the Raspberry Pi inside and a little case over that, so like a little mini computer. So that'd be a good use for it. Now let's see um, the usage with the actual touch screen. Not bad. Let me take the cover off. See if that makes it a little bit more responsive. That's a bit better. Okay.
Okay, so this should be an interesting one. Okay, that's pretty cool. It does wander off a little bit, not a biggie really. Okay, so here's another use for the actual screen itself. Um, maybe of use to some people. So I've got my laptop here, uh, Windows 10, and I've got a HDMI connector on the laptop and I've plugged the other end into the screen. Now let's put the USB end into the actual laptop. So this is an interesting idea. So you could sort of have a dual screen like so. And if I can sort of move the camera a little bit just to show you. So you've suddenly got two monitors. So you could actually have things running in the side, which would be quite useful. So say for instance, you wanted to watch something on iPlayer, have it running at the side, or even a YouTube channel like Geek Street. So let me just put that down. It's a nice little second screen to be honest. If I bring that across. Mute the sound. Okay, just pick a video. Put it in full screen over there if we can. And there you go. Pretty smart to be honest. Just to have like a little screen at the side. So yeah, for the price, um, not bad. Nice little project sort of screen we can play about with. And again, use as dual screen with a, with a laptop if you want to. Again, if you check out the quality, not bad, to be honest. Pretty impressed with it. Quite pleased with this buy, to be honest. So, okay, here's another use for the screen. So obviously with it plugged in and the laptop lid down, works quite nice with this. So yeah, you could use it like a little drawing pad. Um, with the lid open, it doesn't seem to work so well, but quite good like this. And you can quite easily control things. I'll show you there, yeah. Click back on there. So there you go. I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this screen. I have to admit, very impressed and very pleased with it, to be honest. I think we're gonna make some great projects with this. So there you go, thanks for viewing.